So, you know, when you go see a magic show, people still see magic shows. It doesn't just have to be in schools or libraries or things like that, like a real magic show. And they're sawing someone or pulling stuff out of a hat. Do you know that that's not real? No, well, I know they, they say it's not, but I mean, it's, you know, someone must be doing it right. You ever see those uh, things where people make whole like cars disappear and, and stuff flies through the air? I mean, there's got to be something to that. So you're saying it's all fake. Steve, want to hear from GetRubix.com. And today in our Getting Started with Graph part, um, you know, I don't know. I guess it's the part number of whatever it says in this video. Today, we're going to talk about getting device attributes from the graph and taking a look at, you know, what categories come back and what we can do with them. No, 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 fine. I know it's not real. I know it's just, I, I know it's not real. Most of them aren't real. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, uh, you know, getting ready for the new year. We got some new wallpaper put on, you can't see that. Whee! So for this example, what we're gonna do is we wanna take the usage location of the users. Um, and that information is found in the user uh, attributes. Basically, uh, you need that in order for them to use a license. You pick the region they're in. I want to take that information and make a device group around that. So something that's not inherently an Intune, we're going to kind of do some uh, attribute hopping to, to get there. Okay, so we want to get a managed Intune device, right, with the device management manage device call. And so we get back a bunch of attributes. Notice one of the attributes we get back is an email address. Uh, you'll also see that attribute under uh, user principal name. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the user. So we'll retrieve the user email and we'll get the user attribute by hitting the endpoint user slash user email. Now, of course, some of the information that comes back from the user is gonna be usage location. And I could take that usage location and post it to the actual entry device ID. And that will allow me to add a special attribute to the entry device that correlates with the usage location. So basically every time we get one object, we can pull a piece out of it and see if we can query uh, another endpoint for that object and then get even more properties and use those properties to ultimately post something. So we're gonna talk about how we can get those attributes. All right, so we have PowerShell here. I'm going to start by connecting to the graph. Uh, I got to be able to spell for that. Connect MG graph. I should already be logged in. I am. So I'm going to start by manually selecting a device. And I am going to choose this. I'm going to choose this laptop. I think this is my Surface laptop. Yeah, I'm signed in with it. And we're going to get its intune id up here in the url after intune device id so we're going to go get that object so we're going to say our intune device is equal to invoke mg graph request the method is get because remember we're getting and the uri is https microsoft.com slash beta slash device management slash manage devices and i'm going to put my id in there okay let's run that so if i call my intune device now i have all the attributes so specifically what i'm looking for is the let's see do email address I could do user principal name. That's probably a better bet. So let's actually create that variable. So let's say the user name is equal to Intune device dot user, uh, user principal name. Now, if I call these and I just want to call username, I have the username. So you can use the username as a direct query uh, on a user object. So going back here, you can see we did the first part. We got our managed device attributes and we found the user email, or in this case, user principal name. So what we're going to do is we're gonna call that to get the user attributes. So we're gonna say user object equals invoke mg graph request 
method is still get. And the URI is HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash users slash um, we could just put in the username. And let's run that. So now when I call user object, I get everything about my user. That's the equivalent of querying directly from the enter side of the house. So back in here, now we have all our values back. So if we want to find the usage location, uh, I can look for it here. I don't know if I necessarily see it, but I'm just going to do usage location. We're in the US. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, add that usage location to the actual entry device object. And you can see it's not here. If we go to the, let's go to the graph. Um, so if we were to go to devices, I'll pick a random device. Let's pick this first one. Copy. Okay, so I really don't have a usage location on the device. I have a whole bunch of other stuff, um, but there's nothing there. However, I do have a bunch of extension attributes. So I plan to use extension attribute, I don't know, six as the usage location. So the next thing we have to do is we have to get that entra device object. Entra device object. Um, and the, the reason for this is we can't post this directly to the Intune device object. If you remember, we talked about this some time ago. I mean, some time ago, it was like last week, so I don't know. So we're going to use another Intune device property to find that. So Intune device, Azure AD device ID. And that's how we're going to find that. So let's call it um, Intune AAD id is equal to intune device dot azure ad device id okay so now we can use that to get the entra device and we're going to put this in parentheses since every time we query it doesn't bring back the record it brings back a collection of records that we have to crack open so we're going to do invoke mg graph request method get URI is HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash devices. But now we got to do the question mark tick dollar filter. Someone in the comment pointed it's in the comments pointed out it was called, uh, what did they say it was called? That was like super helpful. It was just today a back tick or grave kind of like grave. That's pretty cool. Back ticks fun too. So filter is equal to device ID EQ. And in single quotes, we're going to put the variable. So we're going to put um, Intune AD, AAD ID. Oh, the tick needs to be outside of that. Okay. And then dot value. Okay. So if we run this now, we're going to call it and we got the device we want. It should just be one device. Perfect. Perfect. And because we have that device, uh, we should also have its ID, which we do. We can actually call this enter device object because now we're just going to get the enter device, uh, ID device object. ID. I know it gets crazy. So that'll be intra device object ID. So we should be able to run that intra device object ID. And that's the ID. All right. So now that we have all the variables we need, um, what we're going to do is we want the, did we grab the usage location? Oh, we should grab the usage location. So user object. So we want to grab usage location is equal to the user object usage location. So now we have that. And if we run that, 
That should be the US. Yep, it is. Okay, with all that done, now we talk about posting. So to make a post call, we're just gonna need the JSON. So if we go to the graph and we look at the devices, we can see we need extension attributes and then inside one of the extension attributes to write this. So for example, uh, let's do extension attribute one. So if we change this to a post, we're gonna need extension attributes. Extension attribute one. And we're gonna make that, actually this is a patch, I believe, because we're updating something. And that's gonna be equal to US. Okay, so when we turn that back to a get, extension attribute one is now US. So we're gonna do that with extension attribute six. And uh, we know our schema here of what we need. So let's go ahead and construct some JSON. So the JSON will be, uh, basically the best way to build it in PowerShell is at quote and quote at after. And then in between you put in your, so we'll do ex, ex, uh, ex, same thing we type there, extension attributes. And it'll be extension attribute six. And that'll be usage location. Let's just make sure I got that right. Yep, that looks good. So we have that. Now what we can do is we can run that. So we have the JSON. So if I want to call that, it looks exactly like it should. So we can say invoke mg graph request method is, you know, I've said post, but it's actually a patch. I kept saying post call, but it's actually a patch. So post is when you're create something new, patch is when you're gonna change something that exists. All right, so it's gonna be a patch and the URI is HTTPS. It's directly to the Entra device, right? Microsoft graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash devices slash Entra device object ID. And our body is gonna be the JSON. Let's run it. Well, looks good so far. So we can check it two ways. If we do a get on the device, we should see extension attribute six. Yay, that's also US, perfect. You're getting pretty good at this, right? I mean, it. we, we take simple concepts just by pulling down these get methods and, uh, you know, we're able to find information that we can't find in Intune without going to another console. So when you start using these methods to solve your challenges, things suddenly become a lot easier. Uh, I know it's still a lot to take in, like objects and correlating them, but like I said, just take it slow and you can see we're already making some progress. We'll be seeing you.